Hi, in this video we're going to cover the Rational Zero Theorem. So the Rational Zero Theorem is going to help us find all the rational zeros of a function. So we're going to talk about how to do that looking at the leading coefficient and the constant term, uh, finding what those factors are of those terms, and then how we would calculate all the possible zeros of a function. We're then going to do three examples where we not only find the, all the possible rational zeros, but we're going to find all the zeros. So we're going to take it to a next step and solve the equation, um, but first starting with the rational zero theorem. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look at the rational zero theorem. Uh, this is going to be used to help you identify the rational zeros of a function. So just a couple definitions. First, a zero or a root of a function is a number that makes that function zero. And rational refers to an integer or a fraction. So we're talking about um, zeros like 5, negative 2, and 1 half, not things like the square root of 2 or 3 plus 2i. Those would be examples of roots that are not rational. So in a function here, the rational zeros are also going to be where we cross the x-axis. So where the function crosses the x-axis is also the zeros. That is where the function is zero. All right. So let's take a look at what the rational zero theorem says. So the rational zero theorem says that all rational zeros of a function have the form plus or minus p over q. So let's take a look what p and q are. Where p is the factor of the constant term, and q is a factor of the leading coefficient. So the best way to do this is to take a look at an actual function and calculate the rational zeros for it. So first of all, let's figure out what p is. So p is going to be the factor of the constant term. So the constant term is 3. The only way we can get 3 is 1 times 3. So the factors of p are going to be 1 and 3. Then for q, we look at the leading coefficient. In this case, it's 2. The factors of 2 are 1 and 2. The only way we can get 2 is 1 times 2. And then we take all of the possibilities of p over q. So we could put the 1 over the 1, 1 over 2, or we could put 3 over 1, or 3 over 2. We take all the different combinations, and then we make them plus or minus. So notice when I took 3, I only did the factors of 1, or one and 3. Um, sometimes when you see this explained, you'll see that the factors are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. I just add the plus or minus at the end. All the Everything that we get p over q, is going to work plus or minus because you can have two pluses or two minuses or in the case of negative three you can have a plus one and minus three or the opposite signs as well so we've got eight different possible examples so if we divide these and simplify we've got plus or minus one plus or minus one half plus or minus three and plus or minus three half so there's eight possible rational zeros so those are all the eight right there but the actual zeros are going to be a subset of that. So the actual zeros of this equation are minus 1, minus 1 half, and minus 3. So those are 3 out of the 8 that are the actual, actual rational zeros of this function. Okay, let's take a look at some sample problems how to do with rational zero theorem. On the first problem, we're asked to find all possible rational roots. So we're going to take a look at the roots of um, the constant term. So let's call that P. So now 4, we can make 4 by either doing 1 times 4 or 2 times 2. So 4 actually has three different factors. So 1, 2, and 4 are all different factors of 4. And now Q is going to be a factor of the leading coefficient. So the options for Q are 1 or 2. So then when we do p over q, we have 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 2 over 1, 
2 over 2, 4 over 1, or 4 over 2, and all of these are plus or minus. Now let's simplify all these. So uh, 1 over 1 is 1, so that's plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1 half, 2 divided by 1 is 2, plus or minus 2. 2 divided by 2 is the same as the first one, which is 1, so we don't have to repeat it. We already have that, uh, plus or minus 1. 4 over 1 is 4, so plus or minus 4. And the 4 over 2, again, that repeats 2, so we don't have to repeat it. We have already have that taken care of here. So we've got 8 different possible roots, plus or minus 1, plus or minus a half, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4, all the 8 possible rational roots. Okay, so on, on the next one, we're not just being asked to find all possible rational roots. We want to find all rational roots. So we want to take a subset of all the possible rational roots and to find which one are the actual rational roots. So let's start out with all the possibilities first. So P, the factors of the constant term are going to be 1 and 3. And Q, the factors of the leading coefficient are 1 and 2. So when we take P over Q, we got 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 3 over 1, and 3 over 2. And they're all, of course, plus or minus. All right, so we get plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1 half, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus halves. Now we've got to check and see which one of these um, work because we are asked for all the rational roots, not just the possible rational roots. So here's how we go about checking one. We're going to take and put them into 2x to the third plus 9x squared plus 10x plus 3. So let's put 1 in. If we put 1 in, we're going to get 2 plus 9 plus 10 plus 3, and that does not equal 0. So 1 is not a root. Let's put negative 1 in. Negative 1, negative 1 to the third is negative 1, so this is going to be negative 2. Negative 1 squared is a positive, so this is going to be plus 9. Put in negative 1 times 10, we get negative 10, and plus 3. All right, and when we add these up, we actually do get zero. So negative one is a root. Now we could go through and, and check all of these. Um, we can check all the roots and see which one we get. We've got eight different ones to check on this. And sometimes we're gonna even have more roots than, than, than eight. So what I wanna do is show another way to get the other roots is to take this root and then use long division. So if you need a refresher on polynomial long division, I've got another um, video that covers that. But we're going to do long division once we find one root that works. So if the root is minus 1, then the factor is x plus 1. Because negative 1 is going to make the factor of x plus 1 0. So then we can take and divide x plus 1. We can go 2x to the third plus 9x squared plus 10x plus 3 and divide that by x plus 1. So let me make a little room to do that. Let's get rid of this stuff here. And then I'm going to go and use long division to go ahead and figure that out. All right, so let's do that. Let's go now to long division. All right, so let's set it up as x plus 1 on the outside. And on the inside, we got 2x to the third plus 9x squared plus 10x plus 3. 
And to do long division, we're going to need 2x squared here to get 2x cubed plus 2x squared. We subtract and we get 7x squared plus 10x. We're going to need a 7x here in order to get 7x squared. So we get 7x squared plus 7x. Subtract and we get 3x. Bring the next term down. 3x plus 3. And then we get plus 3. And we get 3x plus 3. Now we know we're going to get 0 here because we saw that negative 1 was a root. And if negative 1 is a root, then x plus 1 is definitely going to be a factor. And we're going to get 0 as a remainder. So then once we get that, we know that 2x squared plus 9x squared plus 10x plus 3 is x plus 1 times 2x squared plus 7 plus 3. So we can take this one step further. 2x squared, that needs an x there, plus 7x plus 3, and we can factor this further. I'm going to just do trial and error here. Uh, you could also do the box method as well, or other ways to factor this. But since these are prime numbers, it's pretty easy. All it can be is 2 and 1, and all it can be is 3 and 1. So 3 and 1 either has to go this way or this way. So in order to get 7, I know that I need 3 here, because 3 times 2 is 6, and then 1 here. So this gets me my factoring of 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. And then um, we can solve for this. This is going to be negative 1 half and negative 3. So our three roots here, our three rational roots are negative three, negative one half, and negative one that we already checked. So that's another way to get, and notice that those three are three of the eight. Those are always gonna be a subset of these. But just another way, rather than checking all eight, this is another way to do it, to factor it down and to solve that way. And again, this is important for two reasons. One is because sometimes you're gonna get May, there might be 16 numbers here that you try to try it, or even more. If these, you know, if you've got um, numbers here in the constant term and leading coefficient that have a lot of factors to them, you're going to get a lot of possibilities that you have to try. And then also, um, if we're trying to find the um, non-rational roots, we're going to have to go this method too. And that I'll show you that in the next problem. All right, so find all the roots here. Um, and again, we're not just finding all possible rational roots, and we're not just finding all rational roots, we're finding all the roots to this. So let's start out with all the possible rational roots. So we've got 4 here. So the factors of P are 1, 2, and 4. 4 times 1 or 2 times 2 is the only way you can get 4. And then Q, there's nothing in front here, so that's like a 1. So Q is just going to be 1. So all our possible P over Q are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. Okay, and then we can go and check some of these. So let's check, we're going to plug it into x to the third plus x squared plus 4x plus 4. So let's try, uh, let's try 1. So 1 is going to get us 1 plus 1 plus 4 plus 4. That does not equal 0. Let's try negative 1. Negative 1 to the third is going to be a negative 1. Squared is going to be positive. Uh, negative 1 times 4 is going to be negative 4 and plus 4, and that does equal 0. Now you could go and do the same method for 2 and negative 2 and 4 and negative 4, but it actually turns out that this is the only, this is the only rational root, the only one that works. So we're going to have to divide uh, do long division again to um, figure out the other rational roots. So if negative 1 is the root, then x plus 1 is the factor. Let's do our long division. Okay, and we're going to get x squared here. And that's going to get us x cubed plus x squared. 
both of these terms actually go out, so we're going to have to bring two terms down this time. And we're going to get plus 4, and that gets us 4x plus 4. We know the remainder is going to be 0 because we know negative 1 is a factor. I mean, negative 1 is a root, so x plus 1 is going to be a factor. And then we just have to factor x squared plus 4. Now, x squared plus 4 is going to get you two terms. You could use a quadratic formula if you like, or if you remember how to factor with imaginary numbers, this is going to be x plus 2i and x minus 2i, because there's a difference of square, and you're going to get x squared minus 4i squared. The i squared is negative 1, so that becomes plus 4. So your, so your root is negative 1 is your rational root, but then you have two additional roots of negative 2i and positive 2i. And that's how you would get all the roots, um, is to go further and factor it, and then solve for the imaginary, the complex roots. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments on this video or suggestions for future videos, just comment below. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. And I've got another suggestion for you to watch right here. Thank you, and come back again soon.